y'all, it's nice. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are talking about the strange town of Skidmore, Missouri, and how a murder happened in broad daylight with 50 or 60 townspeople witnessing it, and no one saw a thing. They witnessed it, but nobody is speaking. They are the definition of we don't snitch around these parts, okay? Nobody is speaking, honey. This happened in 1981. Nobody has ever been convicted of this crime. And that is the crime of the killing of the town bully, Ken Rex McElroy in Skidmore, Missouri, July 10th, 1981. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So I had tried to find more information about Ken Rex McElroy, but I could not find anything about, you know, his childhood. Everything that I found was just leading up to what happened. So we are just going to start by talking about like his character. And okay, so Ken Rex McElroy is was a man that lived in a small town of northwest missouri the town is called skidmore so skidmore missouri is actually um, 48 minutes from where i currently am right now and i had a co-worker that said she went through skidmore and People there are just not welcoming at all. If you did not grow up there, they don't want you there. So this town is very peculiar. It's just a very strange town. And the stories that I found about Skidmore were very strange as well. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So all the products that I am using will be down in the description box. So Skidmore, Missouri is a town in Nottaway County, Missouri, in Northwest Missouri. And it's a small town with about 200 people. When I looked up the population, it had said 200 and something. But at the time of the murder, it had said that it was up to 400 people. So it fluctuates between those numbers. So back in 1981, Ken McElroy was a 47 year old man that was described as the town bully. He was described as someone that was very bold and intimidating and he just did not care about the law. He did not care about how he came off to people. He did not care about what people thought of him. He was just a very matter of fact type of person. And the town did not like, particularly like this person at all. He was a menace to society and he terrorized this little itty bitty old sleepy town of Skidmore, Missouri, okay? It was said that everyone knew that Ken owned a bunch of guns and dogs. So, I mean, in small towns, usually everybody owns a gun, but child, he went the extra, extra mile to own more guns than everybody else. For what? We don't know, just because he could. Just some things that Ken McElroy had done in the town. He accused a neighbor of spying on him. So he followed this neighbor on a road and pulled up in front of this man and stopped in front of him so that he couldn't get around him. Ken McElroy then got out of his car, accused his neighbor of spying on him, pulled out a gun, put it to the man's stomach and pulled the trigger. He had survived, but he reported saying that he didn't know if it was a joke or if he was kidding, like not kidding, like 
the town knows him as someone who doesn't care. But the victim said that he didn't know if Ken was just trying to scare him or if he was actually going to pull the trigger because that was his reputation in town. He's either going to try to scare you or he's going to pull that trigger without a second thought, okay? So he pulled the trigger on this neighbor that he accused of spying on him. Another thing that Ken had done was that he had he has kids. So he had two young kids that had gone into the store and they were accused of stealing candy by the owners and the owners asked them to put it back. So Ken did not like that his children were being accused of being low thieves, right? He was not having it. He said, not my kids. So he went in there and he intimidated the store clerks and it was reported that it went on for a while where he was he would just stalk these store employees basically because they had accused his children of stealing some candy child he was not having it so he actually one day decided he's done intimidating them he's still mad that they accused his kids of stealing so he was gonna do something about it he went to the store he pulled up to the store and the owner was out back on his break or having a cigarette and he pulled out his handy dandy reliable gun and pointed it to the man's neck and in the interviews he said he wasn't sure if ken was gonna pull the trigger or if he was just scaring him child they always wonder if he's just scaring y'all y'all should know by now he is not scary y'all he pulls the trigger now ken had committed dozens of felonies but he was only convicted on that one felony where he shot the store owner grazing his neck that was the only thing that he was convicted of he had burned down people's homes he had shot people. There was even an occasion where him and his wife, Trina, I think she was like his second or third wife, Trina, had brought guns to church. Like they just busted into church with guns. Like who goes to church loaded? But apparently Pasta was ready. He had his own piece two okay or let's side bar into who trina was trina was his third or fourth wife and he had actually met trina when she was 14 okay she was 14 years old and he was already a grown man which is how he got the statutory uh charge right because trina's parents were not having it this grown man with their 14 year old daughter they weren't having it so they pressed charges on him and what did he do he burned down her parents home i don't know what about that made old girl think like this is the man for me but honey she said she wanted all of that so they ended up getting married I mean, why would you marry somebody that's going to burn down your parents' home? At some point, don't you think he's going to do something to you? But that's none of my business. Back to the story. So we say that he only got convicted of that one felony, right? Well, with that one, of course, he went to court. He was convicted and he was sentenced to 10 years, but then it was reduced to two years, but then they appealed it and he actually only served six months. Six months for shooting someone. So he ended up getting out on bond or something like that. And the town of Skidmore was furious and he was bolder than ever 
he went into the town tavern, D&G tavern, and he went in there gloating and he told them he was going to finish off the guy that he was convicted for shooting the store owner and they were just they were done with him they were done with depending on the law to protect them from this menace to society they were just done let me stop calling him all these names child so his hearing was supposed to be on july 10th 19 81 but that was actually postponed and on that same day the townspeople had gathered because they had all signed a petition to try to keep old girl from retaliating against them you know because he had broken his bond agreement i think that's how it works i don't know how that all works but he had broken all that so they signed a petition to protect the people so they had gathered to brainstorm on how they would protect the people of the town who had signed this petition to throw Miss Girl back in prison where he clearly belongs. They were all gathered at the American Legion. Someone had come in and said, Ken is back in town, okay? So they had all went over to the DNG Tavern where Ken was with Trina. And you know he and Trina stay strapped stay ready so they were at the bar strapped and ready and the townspeople had just they had enough child they walk in there and they stare him down and trina described the ordeal as very uncomfortable she said the atmosphere was very uncomfortable she said you can just tell there was there was a lot of tension in the air so uncomfortable her and Ken decided, you know, you know, we are outnumbered right now. It would behoove us to just climb into our truck and get on out of there. And Miss Trina said that's exactly what her and Ken did. Child, they hauled ass right out of there, right? So they went to his truck and Trina said the crowd followed. They said... Where you going, Ken? We ain't scared of you no more. Nobody said that, but you know, they just, the crowd silently followed. And she said it was dozens of people that followed them to Ken's truck. So once they got to Ken's truck, he got in and I don't know if he was just oblivious or if he didn't believe that them people were about to do anything to him, but he, took his sweet time, I guess, and did not start his truck right away or hurry out of there. So Trina said that everyone had followed them out and just stood there staring silently, coming to her side of the door and literally just stood there. And then she said she saw a man go across the street and take a gun out of his pickup. And next thing you knew, it was raining bullets. So the weird thing about it is the people that were standing around took the time to pick up, allegedly, pick up all of the shell casings from the bullets. And by the time that police got there 15 minutes later, there wasn't much evidence left and Ken McElroy was in his truck dead. They spared Trina though. So they carefully shot into the truck, making sure not to hit her, but getting him. It was reported that there were at least three types of guns used. So that means three gunmen, I suppose. And it was reported that the sheriff, the sheriff was at that town meeting at the American Legion. It was reported that he was there. He says he was not there. He was, he had no parts in any of that and conveniently was out of town when that happened. So it took 15 minutes 
for the police to get to that scene, which in a small town, I'm sure it doesn't take 15 minutes to get anywhere. So conveniently, the sheriff was in the next town over. Like, what are you doing at the next town over, sir? Shouldn't you be keeping watch over your town? Like you're just conveniently out of town? Sis. Anywho, Ken McElroy was pronounced deceased at the scene. And it was reported that there were, there was a crowd of 50 or 60 people that witnessed this crime and nobody is saying a thing. Nobody is fessing up to being the shooter. Nobody is admitting to seeing anything. Even though people stood around and watched this go down in broad daylight, no one is speaking. There's actually a movie, there's a couple. There's one that I saw called No One Saw a Thing. There's another one in broad daylight. There have just been documentaries and movies made on this incident because it was a murder that took place with dozens and dozens of witnesses, yet no one's ever been convicted of Ken McElroy's murder. Now, Trina tried to sue. She tried to sue the sheriff's department. She tried to, child, she tried to sue whoever she could, right? But they told Miss Girl, no, ma'am. We are not responsible. They never caught the murderer. But, you know, the townspeople were interviewed in a lot of these documentaries. And a lot of them say that, you know, they don't know who did it. But if they did, they wouldn't tell because he was just, he was a menace. Imagine someone getting away with 21 felonies, burning down people's homes, intimidating witnesses, just being a bully and not just a bully like saying stuff, but a bully with a gun that actually is not afraid to use it. How tragic. So the townspeople felt like the system was failing them. So they decided to take matters into their own hands. And at the same time, while townspeople were relieved that their the town bully was no more, a lot of them had done interviews too that they were still worried because now there's a murderer in town, like it could be your neighbor. And what if that person gets bold because they just got away with murder and now feel like they can, you know, carry out vigilante justice for whatever they feel they can, you know? So it's kind of like, yeah, the town bully's dead, but now we got a murderer that is among us, right? And child, as for Miss Trina, she took a movie deal about this story and she she got out of there. She left so fast. It, um, I think her last known location was either um, the Ozarks or what is that? What is that place that people vacation all the time in Missouri? People in Missouri go there all the time. It starts with a B. Oh my God. Branson. I don't think it was Branson. She didn't go to Branson. She went down there somewhere, child. She got out of there because apparently they were threatened. She was getting threats, threatening her, threatening her children. So she dropped the charges dropped the she dropped the lawsuit and she took her little movie deal and she left okay so with that happening you would think okay the town bully's gone little old skidmore can now be a silent sleepy town again where neighbors don't have to lock their doors anymore right wrong so since the ken mcelroy thing it's 
Skidmore has been one of the strangest towns in the US so far. So there have been many, many unexplained murders in Skidmore. There was a girl that uh, her baby was cut out of her. There was another girl in town that her boyfriend beat her so bad in the front yard that she was unrecognizable. And then he poured dish Dawn soap, Dawn dish soap down her throat as she was passing. There was another one of, I think it involved teenage girls and they went missing or they were murdered. There was a boy, um, he went to go put jumper cables, I think it was, back in his shed and he disappeared not to be found again. And it was said that the townspeople knew of exactly what happened to him. So that town is just super crazy. It's super creepy. Um, people who are not from there are not welcome. It's just an unwelcoming town. It's cursed, basically, is what people believe. Since the Ken McElroy thing, the town's cursed. Like, wouldn't it be crazy if it's one person doing all of that? Wouldn't it be crazy? The baby being cut out thing, that wasn't, that was, the person was actually convicted who did that. Um, that could be a story for another day. But yeah, that town is just super strange. Um, I've read articles that said that they pretty much opened up Pandora's box with Ken McElroy's murder. Because since then, things have just been happening that should not be like statistically, there should not be that many occurrences in a, in a small town that doesn't have that big of a population, you know? Um, people are moving out of Skidmore, I guess. So I bet in a couple of years, it'll be a ghost town because from what I could find in my research, it looks like the population's just going down, so. Yeah, that is it for this video. I think I might do another Skidmore video talking about one of the other strange happenings that I just mentioned earlier. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this content all the way around. If you do enjoy this kind of true crime and makeup content, don't be afraid to let me know down in the comments and hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification so you are notified whenever I upload. Uh, talk to me down in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment, share, like, subscribe, do whatever you need to do to get the word out that we are doing true crime and makeup in these parts of the internet, okay? Once again, my name is Nige. I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.